Well, hey there, guys. Fit Jar Islands Haven Soap. Pole Silver Blade. Brand new. Mercure Progress Short Handle. Sterling Finest Badger. It's a two band. It's a 26 millimeter version of the Craving Shaving Handle. It's been soaking in water, and I do like to do that with this particular brush and a few other two bands that have quite a bit of backbone. I feel that the extra soaking really does change them more so than other badgers, like silver tips and things like that. Makes the tips softer. Uh, I had a That Darn Rob, maybe it was even a version one or two brush that... I can tell a big difference if I soaked it for 15 minutes to half an hour before the shave. Really could tell the difference in softness. All right, so now that you've seen the goods, let's talk a little bit more about them as I load the blade into the razor. Pull silver is interesting because the last, maybe the last uh, several months, we have seen comments online saying that they've been discontinued and that sort of thing and the thing is they don't say pole silver on them they just say super iridium extra stainless and the wisomet blades also say this which leads some people to think that maybe the wisomets are the same just rebranding or something like that uh, and but and it looks like i haven't really heard too much of it uh, and I haven't, I don't think I've seen the pole silvers pop up on the retail sites. I think in some cases the distributors might have been in years past because this is a rumor that has propagated itself and it is, it is repeated year after year, uh, perhaps coming in phases. Maybe the distributors have slowly released the inventory to the retailers and, and so that creates that demand a little bit. It could be that they've been out of production for a while, but they have just had such a big stockpile of them that we're just now starting to maybe see that stockpile uh, get toward the end of its life. I'm very interested to see how this goes. There, This time, there were even some notes and memos and emails presented on some of the different forums talking about how the uh, or were from some of the administration uh, or behind the pulse silver blades that you know looked like it was giving it a little bit more credence than it had had in the past so i'm curious about that good news is we've got tons of other blades that do really well uh, the gillette platinum the gillette silver blue the nasset does great for me obviously feather is good kai is good astra is a tremendous budget blade for many guys that does really well in many razors uh, and then you got that whole seven o'clock lineup that are uh, really good so we've got a we've got a lot of nice blades to choose from all right so that's the blade i started my journey with wet shaving on amazon and in the amazon comments and so I read the comments over so many soaps, over so many scents and brands, so many razors, the Mercours, Parkers, Muleys. I, I read the Edwin Jagger. I bought my Edwin, Edwin Jagger from Amazon, and I don't use any of those razors anymore because they all have something in common. They are all Zamac razors, pop metal razors in the insides, in the core, but they're plated with, of course, stainless steel or chrome, or not stainless steel, but, you know, chrome or something like that. Now, chrome plating usually can be done really well, and it's a very durable type thing. However, there are some weak points in a razor. Uh, this is a, I'm just confident that this Mercure is the same as all the rest of them, In the, and I can even see some of the plating being removed, being worn away from the center hole here. This is not a new razor. And, and so what can happen is, if, especially if the plating wears away on these threads, which is just going to over time, 
then the Zamac, Zamac metal is exposed. And if you leave water there, it's going to corrode and then eventually it's going to break. Definitely seen a good many of these types of razors break. And then the guy has to try to figure out how to replace them. And as long as they're inexpensive, like the Bailey razors that are out there, they are $8, $12. That's it, you know? And so if they give you five years of use before they break, terrific. That's a great value for the money. Uh, but if you, uh, I start to question it when you have a Mercur, for one example, that costs a whole lot more than that. Sometimes three or four times, four or five times as much for the same essential idea of having a Zamac razor that it's eventually going to break. Uh, and so that's something for you to decide what's worth your money and what's not. Okay, that's one thing. My other beef with Mercur is that on Amazon, boy, you just so often ran into people who were talking about the German engineering and all that. It, Mercur allegedly comes from Germany. I'm not saying these guys are made in China. I wouldn't be surprised if they were. But if you look, the plating looks pretty nice on all the external surfaces. But if you look inside, you look on the underside of all the caps, it's not that great. It's kind of poor. And, and I realize that is a non-show surface. But... To me, if you're going to talk about some legendary engineering, then it needs to apply into the cap as well. It needs to apply in all the other little spots. And if you look closely, it, it looks more like a you know, Chinese craftsmanship uh, that instead of some kind of precision craftsmanship. It looks like, and when I said Chinese, what I actually meant to say was a uh, large-scale, bulk, quick machinery, a uh, fast process to just churn out a bunch of stuff. That's the process it looks like. It looks like to me when I view the uh, the quality and workmanship on on these razors. And so I personally would. In, I think the a lot of the Mercurs and stuff are marketed at a price point that's uh, more like I would definitely rather spend uh, on a Razor Rock, uh, one of their. Razors like the Mamba or the uh, Game Changer, especially, they uh, they have a nice uh, a few different uh, stainless steel offerings, and the quality is much better on those than on the Mercours. Not to mention the Fatips, which are plated like the Mercours, but what's inside a pot metal? No, no, no. It's got brass inside of it with the Fatips, for instance. And so I that's the beef I have with the Mercours. Now, granted, let's say it lasts you four years and let's say uh, you pay 60 bucks for the progress. And that may actually be kind of low. I know that the Futur, that futuristic looking one, I think that's like 70 bucks uh, to get that one. And so this guy may actually be more money than that. Um, but if that gives you four good shaves and that's 20 bucks a year, I mean, that's not all that bad, right? Anyway, so that's my other beef with Mercur. I am going to let that sit. My soapbox is done. Let us give this guy a fair shake. It's, this is definitely one that on certain forums, you won't hear anything about because nobody uses it. On other forums, you will see nothing, just a whole bunch of love for this razor. And they have even gone... And this is, I'm really surprised about this. They've taken a Zamac razor and done a whole bunch of customizations uh, to it. Different uh, tweaks and adjustments and, and things like that. There's, there's, uh, it's, it's the progress, but then there's a, they're calling it the Mergress or some different things depending on what modifications are done. I never gravitated toward this model in the beginning because of this plastic handle. I just kind of perceive that as... Why put a plastic handle on a metal razor? I just don't, I think that's kind of dumb. Now the shape is nice in one sense because when you're doing this pulling motion, when I, I use this kind of grip to do this pulling motion, it's very easy to maintain a nice grip on the razor. And so at least ergonomically, I think it's nice. Uh, I think it's ugly, I think it's weird. I guess if you get used to it and you start 
working that up in your mind, you could see it as the shape of and the look of it, and so you would get used to it. But anyway, something else that immediately strikes me as I look at this razor, I didn't buy it specifically. I bought a box of uh, straight razors, just the one I used recently, the big old 9 8 Wade & Butcher delight to use. And I'm a noob, so surely it's going to get even better than that. This came in that box. And so it was just kind of an added benefit. And I'm glad to bring it to you guys. I will put a few shaves in it. Uh, unless this one really... Well, even if this sucks, I'm going to still put a few more shaves in it. Let's give it a, a fair uh, evaluation and some, with some different blades. It jumps out to me as looking a whole lot like the Parker variant which I really enjoyed in the early parts of my shaving journey. It has this same this shame shape, this U shape on each side with this trough that takes away all the hair and suds. And right now the head is, is very high up and the adjustment is made down on the numbers down here. Uh, one important thing is that, and the variant is the same way, there's a triangle symbol on one side, it's not on the other side, and then on the end cap, there is a little notch at the very top on one end. I am I haven't looked up looked at it to make absolutely certain, but I'm just betting the farm that those things need to be on the same side, otherwise you'll be half a turn off because of the adjustment. Because they've made the adjustment knob the same piece of equipment that loosens the whole thing up. And so let's go ahead and put the blade on there without further ado. There we go. And then all we have to do is look at the triangle, make sure that notch is on the same side, screw it in, and then what I always do is screw it in all the way. And then the indicator, there's a dot, a bubble, an indention, divot right there. And then I will then start to back it up. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And so you can choose between one and five. And I reckon you could keep undoing it a little bit and go higher than that if you wanted to, since it is the uh, mechanism that allows this uh, top cap portion to raise up. And it's got a spring in there. Uh, so let's set it. Let's start with it at the at the two setting. We'll play conservative. See if it's a nice smooth shaver. So I wonder if they marketed, or if they created, modeled the variant after this design. I sure would think that this has been around longer than the variant. The handle is also interesting. I think it looks nice in terms of this part of the handle, but it's almost squarish because it has four concave flutes, larger sized concave flutes, front, side, side, and back. And then it has a smaller flute on those ribs that are in the other four positions. And so in a way it looks uh, multifaceted, but when you're holding it, it really kind of feels more like a, uh, a square type handle or a rectangle type handle, um, but with a, with slight curves to it. All right, so let's see how it works and with a pole silver. The soap we're using today is Fit Jar. Pardon me, Fit Jar Haven, and it is one that I used once before recently, and I enjoyed it. I just felt gravitated toward it. I had a whole box of Barrister and Man, and I smelled that Cologne Russe, and I smelled the Baudelaire, and I smelled the Lavinel, and they were just tremendous. But for some reason, I just felt like using this Fit Jar. Barrister and Man performs better, but I just kind of felt like using the Fit Jar today. Who knows how our little quirks and cravings go, right? All right, well, I'm glad I was able to describe to you a few things about this shave because I wanted to use that time as well to get that finest badger brush to soak in some water. I am going to wet my face and then we'll start loading up the soap. 
Now, the first time I used this was recently, and the puck has pretty much cemented itself into the bowl. You can definitely see the gap around that. So I didn't do anything specific. I didn't shred it like I sometimes do and then press those shreds into it. I just decided to see if the wet soap would kind of cement itself into the uh, tub and it seems like it, it has. And then the more shaves you do with it, the more it will, as it dries, the more it will uh, keep going with that. All right, let's do a 40 second load just because I don't know. 35 rolled around right there. So, 05 will be 30 seconds. So, 15 on the next minute will be 40 seconds. Just kind of a chamomile and la a lavender scent with supposedly hints of cedar in there as well. I didn't really pick up on those as much. It's just a nice, easy going. I do somehow really enjoy the hard pucks. I don't know what about them it makes me like them so much, but I just do. And there we go. That's 40 seconds. We'll have to see if that is enough time. And a lot of times I will rinse a puck off the, the sides of the, the thing off here, but in this case, I'm just going to wipe it off. And that way I keep the keep everything from getting too, too wet and messy and stuff. All right. So now we've got the lather. It is forthcoming. What we have right now is the soap on the tips. And then the water is in the brush. And so we're going to mix it for a little bit and combine those two things to make the lather. It's going to be very pasty at first because we don't have a lot of water in the brush. So it's, I'm not going to spend too much time at this stage here. Some soaps you can just add everything at once. And this may very well be one of them. But I'm just kind of doing my normal practice here and since I know that this is a hard soap and it can take a good bit of water I went ahead and went in with one and a half teaspoons as the first amount I decided to add in then when it looks like it's you know pretty developed pretty uniform I'll add some more, add a teaspoon, I can feel the backbone and the density of this knot. We've already got a pretty nice looking lather after just a few minutes. Probably still needs a, a bit of water. Ooh, do you see that long stretch there? It might not need much more water. Let's just give it a good mix keep it homogeneous and mixed well because if that was a wet spot then it's not telling us the truth about the whole lather is it not a lot of lather made right now now look at this look at that it's holding its own weight really easily so let us add a little bit more Last time I used it, I did bloom the puck of soap, and that can def that often affects your load time. 
In the case of Williams soap, it can divide your load time in half if you start with a, a puck that's been soaked or bloomed beforehand. In terms of quantity, looks like we've got plenty of lather to do the job. And why don't we just go with this today? A little water on my face again. Chilly water these days, as we've kind of had a, a little bit of a cold turn in the weather so hot lately and this is not that way right now yeah I can tell the soak did well for this brush. It feels better than it did the other day. A little bit easier splay. You have to, with these dense brushes, you kind of have to strategize a little bit more with your lather because when you are working an area in a circular motion like this, you kind of empty out the center of the knot. And so you have to then grab some side lather off the side of the brush and then work that back into the center. Yeah, so it's a, it's a little bit easier. You don't have to be as strategic with the less dense knots. The, the regular density knots. They just circulate that lather through the brush much more readily. But then they don't have that same dense feel that a lot of people like. So just pick which which is your priority, right? Just lay down a little thin layer there. And we're in good shape. Yeah, we'll keep that around the goatee because we can use that as my touch up. All right, first strokes with a Mercure Progress on setting two. See if it's smooth. Let's take a look visually at the gap. Hey, yeah, that's not a lot of exposure. I think it is positive exposure, but this might be a nice little mild razor. Now, I got rid of the variant because it was noisy. I liked it a lot, but it was noisy. I've got a feeling the progress is going to be similar because of the same design. So, very similar geometry at least in appearance now the the feel is nice you do hear that audio i dare say if you like the variant you might like the progress It is a little scrapey feeling. And so at the two setting, I might appreciate it being a little more mild and smooth. I definitely would not call this razor smooth, but there might be some people out there that do, especially folks that might have a much thicker lather that is maybe running a little drier. And so they need 
a little bit more aggression to cut through that. And then by the time it cuts through it, it gives the perception of being smooth. It's kind of a running theory I've got going. All right, let me rinse. I wonder if you have a soap kind of similar to this one that has known relaxing properties like lavender does. I wonder if you could almost subliminally be drawn to that soap if you um, are seeking a relaxing type experience in your shave. I wonder if that could have an almost unknown pull to maybe affect your cravings, affect your, what do I feel like today? Oh, I feel like that, that fit jar haven or some other, you know, lavender type soap. All right, the rinse felt nice in terms of the closest of my face. The first pass was cut down really, really well with this razor and the pole silver within. So let's put down another layer of goo. Kind of looks like I got the lather right on this one in terms of the water. And when I say right, of course, I mean right for me. You guys get to choose how you want yours done, right? Cool, cool water. Actually kind of cold with this little downturn. Hmm, you know what? Let's try to do... Let's back off. I need bifocals, guys. Let's take her down to a one setting. And there, there's no clicking like there is maybe with a Fat Boy or the Vintage Gillettes. And so you could easily do a 1.5 or 2.25 or, you know, something like that. You could definitely do that. It is a little bit... It's firm to turn. And so uh, at least right now, I'm not seeing any danger of turning it when you don't mean to. So that's that's good. So I'm using it as a one. So yeah, it does kind of have a scrapey, slightly scrapey feel. If you're used to that, then you'll you're going to think it's very smooth. But when you've had some of these razors like the Carve and the Fatipes and the Game Changers that really do a good job of clamping down timeless and hold the blade really well from the bottom as well. That's the catch. Because most razors work on the process, the principle of I'm going to bow you by having a an arc, which is the top cap, and then shoving something up the middle of it to create that bow. And that's what this one does. And so if I look, I'm thinking maybe seven millimeters, six to seven millimeters of overhang between when that bottom support stops and the edge of the blade. And so that's that amount of play. And so that's what creates that audio. You don't get that same audio when the bottom support goes much closer to the edge of the blade. And that audio is called caused by vibration. And so that's why I like those smoother razors because they don't have that vib vibration microscopically moving across your face. Now, uh, this, is no this is no slouch. It doesn't mean it's a bad razor, right? It just mean I really like my preference is for those smoother ones. And... If I was, based on this first impression here, this number one setting, I kind of wish it was a little bit smoother, but uh, it's, it, 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 I'd probably leave it at number one, to be honest with you, um, because it's, it seems like it's cutting really well. And I would be okay with using that if I was stuck on a desert island or something like that. It's not too bad. I did run this lather perhaps a little bit more on the wet side of perfect. It, it's not giving me creamy rinses, but it is giving me nice slick rinses.
water out of the goatee. Uh, the razor has, is getting a nice bit of glide from the lather. So that's the job of the lather. And it looks like it's doing it just fine. So with Fit Jar, these hard pucks, I may need to run the lather a little drier than I might normally. All right, we're going to keep it on setting one. And sometimes when you have a mild setting, and you continue to use that uh, mild setting on the, like the third pass, it can be an opportunity for you to refine and practice your angle. Try to find an angle where you're hearing some cutting. Easy to hear that. And then you know with it being the mildest setting, that means it's the hardest of the angles that it's able to offer you. When you've got the blade exposed more, then you've got a range of options to choose from with your uh, your handle angle and your blade angle. When the blade is recessed more, you, you're, you're lowering that window of opportunity. Okay, so I'm going to now just do the little touch up, take some lather from the bowl. I've done three passes now. I'm confident I've gotten a nice close shave. My skin does feel a little bit uh, tender. And that could be from the, the blade. With its uh, vibration and chattering as it moves across the skin. So it's a little bit noisy for me. And, and, and along with that comes... The, the kind of the chattering and the um, uh, slight scrapey feel tendency to it. Uh, but I can see why people like it. I can see why it would um, be an enjoyable razor. It's got a nice, a nice heft to it. Right now the balance point is pretty close to the head. Um, I, would, I wouldn't mind having a metal end. And I believe that's one of the customizations they have with the Progress is to change the way some of the ends work on here and, and it's got a nice weight to it the the square I'm, I'm certain the squarish kind of handle with the dominant sides I was telling you about is so that you can hold it by each side and that kind of centers the razor so you always kind of know which way it's facing so even though my face does feel a little bit Like maybe a, an, a too much of an aggressive setting was used is tender. I um, I think it could be the blade. It could just be the nature of this razor, and that's that's what just about any blade is going to give me. The, how are we going to find that out? Is just by trying it with more blades. But I don't know. I'm I'm very glad I didn't go with the three, which is the kind of the mid range setting in terms of aggression. I'm sure it would have been fine in terms of, I don't think I would have cut myself up or anything like that. I don't, I don't think I'd be hurting or anything, but I'm glad I started with a two and then backed it down to a one because I definitely don't uh, definitely like things at the smoother spectrum as long as they still give good performance. The cut's really good. The cut's pretty good. I'm happy with that. This is a brand new pole silver. I do have a pole silver that I've got maybe 24 uses on. And so that's my marathon blade. We'll see how many uh, uses I can get on that one. But this is the one uh, that I'll use maybe up to about 10 times and then replace it with another one uh, as I use it for evaluative purposes to give razors a kind of unequal footing with each other, that sort of thing. So how much water did I use? It looks like about... Three and a third teaspoons is how much I added via the syringe to the lather. And I have, 
I could probably get, yeah, I could get two passes out of what's left. I'd say I came pretty close to being right on the money with this lather. Probably a little bit on the wet end of perfection. Uh, or not perfection, but that nice range where I want to be. I, I don't, I'm not looking for perfection each time, but as long as it's within a nice range, whether it's on the wet side or the dry side of that little, little range of being still creamy, but if I add a little bit more water, it would be not creamy. I like to stop right at that precipice. All right. Cleanup time. I don't imagine I'm going to keep this razor other than putting a few blades through it. But if I did keep a Zamac razor, I would definitely disassemble it after each time and clean, especially the threading there, to try to keep that as dry as possible. Because even if the plating does wear away and the pot metal is exposed, you can really extend the life. I'm pretty certain you can really extend the life of your razor by making sure that that pot metal is not eaten away by moisture. And moisture really does aggressively go after the pot metal. So I would keep it clean and dry in there. You can probably get a lot more years of use out of it. And I'm going to say this again because it is quite important. Remember to line up the triangle with the slot there on the top, the end of the top cap. Make sure that those are on the same side so that your uh, calibration is correct. What do I feel like smelling like tonight? Let's go with Triumph from Sterling. Pretty sure it's a cologne kind of dupe. Yesterday I put on... Nivea Deep Comforting. And I tell you what, folks, that vanilla scent lasted all the next day. It lasted through the night and then for most of the next day. The staying power, and I didn't even use a lot of it, the staying power on that one is tremendous. Yeah, Triumph is nice. Just a kind of a cologne scent. I'm afraid it's in that genre where I, I don't really know a lot of the... Uh, different pieces and parts to that type of scent. So I just call it the cologne top area. You can look it up on Sterling's website, or I believe I will, yeah, you look it up on Sterling's website or trythatsoap.com. All right, so this guy's clean and ready to be put away. I believe that I will be using the Fine Accoutrements, World's Finest Razor for the next few shaves because uh, I've got that on kind of loan as an evaluation and if I like it I'll pay for it and keep it and if not then I will send it back to the the maker and thank him very much for his kindness he does have a uh, money back guarantee uh, with his razors and probably other products too but he specifically told me that if the razor if it I if I didn't really enjoy it then I could just send it back even if I paid for it ahead of time and so that's pretty cool so um, we'll have that one up here soon. Maybe now that I've got the pole silver going, maybe I'll stick the pole silver in it and see how it does with that one. That's a good idea. We'll see what soaps I gravitate toward tomorrow. Sterling, Sterling is a little bit of an intense aftershave for me. I guess my skin is just sensitive enough to sometimes have problems and get a little bit of redness if I apply that to my skin right after the shave. And that is why I did a little bit of cleanup for several minutes before I put on that aftershave. And the good thing is I'm not experiencing anything odd and strange. The razor, just the razor and blade, did give me just a tiny bit of redness right here. Not some redness that feels a certain way or feels bad, but just uh, I could see it. But nice close shave. If I was stuck with the progress from Mercure, on a desert island or something like that, I would still enjoy my shaves. I would relish them and it would be a fun time. So it's a good razor. It, you know, it obviously has those flaws with being a Zamac razor. And, and if, I don't know the price of the progress, but if it starts, to, if it comes anywhere near uh, some stainless razors or some brass razors like the carved brass, I would definitely go with the carve instead of the 
Mercure for the smoother shapes, just as close, but smoother. And then of course, the fact that the ingredients are the manufacturing uh, materials are premium and are not going to uh, break and corrode over time. So, uh, so there's that. I would also probably, well, yeah, because this progress is going to be more expensive than a, a fat boy or a slim or a super adjustable, all the vintage adjustables from Gillette. And I like the way any of those shave better than, uh, better than this guy. They're much smoother, less scrapey, but you know what? That scrapiness kind of resembles a straight razor in some respects. And so it's possible that that is a desirable characteristic for some shavers out there because it's all subjective, right? And if you like kind of that scrapey noise, uh, if that's enjoyable to you, then it the, sounds like the progress might be a good option for you to look at. So there's, uh, you know, one man's inferior razor is another man's favorite, right? All right. Uh, so there we go. I think we are good. I'm enjoying the triumph uh, being around me. It's definitely not conflicting with anything that the soap had to bring to the table. The soap is just very mild. It's almost a classic kind of feel, a traditional type of uh, feeling you get when you're using it. It's very, very light. And while a crope like Sterling or Chiseled Face or any of those guys, the whole Stubble Buster lineup is very weakly scented uh, to me. I will definitely pass those quickly on to somebody else. But for some reason, hard soaps that have the same low strength, I will keep those around sometimes because I don't know, there's something different, something different about them. All right, guys, you take care. And this is Sugar Daddy Shaves. And I really hope that there's been something in this video to help you guys out. And, uh, and I hope it'll be good for you. Good night.